Hi, this is Paula from Alanda Craft, and in this video I'm going to take you through EQ8, which is also called Electric Quilt 8. Now what EQ8 allows you to do is design your own quilts from scratch, basically. It's, it's an amazing software, we've been using it for quite a few years and we highly recommend it. So this is the main screen you see when you um, open up EQ8. You get three options, you can design quilts, draw blocks or work with fabrics. Now designing the quilts allows you to design a quilt from scratch or you can use one that's built in. The draw blocks section allows you to design a block from scratch but you can also use from choose from one of the thousands of different quilt blocks in there and I'll show you how to access those in a minute. Or you can work with fabric so you can basically scan your fabric that you want to use for it for your quilt, scan it in, take an image and, and import it into here and use it in the quilt. So basically you can see what your quilt's going to look like with your chosen fabric before you even cut your fabric which is great. Now it's also got fabric swatches in there and they're fabric swatches from Robert Kaufman Motor and so on so you can use those instead if you wish. Okay so let's design a quilt from scratch and see what that looks like. So I'll click on there and you get to this screen and basically you can see you've got a 4x4 four four default quilt block here and it's got one border on it. So this is we're under this tab here, New Quilt Horizontal, and that's what you're seeing there. But you can change this by just clicking on these options here. So you can change to an on point, variable point, and so on, depending what your option, what option you want. But I'm going to stick with horizontal. Now I want to change the layout because I don't want a 4x4, four four. I want something different. So let's go to layout, select that, and we can now change the number of blocks. So just say I go up to I'll go 5x7, say. Okay, so there's my quilt there now. Now I can change the finished size of the blocks. At the moment it's defaulting to 9 inches, but I can change this by just dragging. Now you can see how the top's dragging and the bottom isn't. So I might select this option to keep them proportional and drag again. Okay, maybe I'll go with 8 by 5, 8.5, so finish block. Okay, now I can add sashing if I wish. So I can drag this up again, I'll keep everything proportional by selecting that. Now I can drag up and I can see how that I can just change to a sashing. So I might go with a 1.5 sashing there. You can also include a sashed border by selecting that. You'll notice how it's put in a sashed border as well when I click or unclick that. I'll just leave that off for this one. Now come over to borders. Let's add some borders here because at the moment we've only got the one. You can see when I click on it it's highlighted that one border. Okay and I can change the width of that border by just dragging this up. So maybe I'll go with that, 2.5. And then I'll add another one. I want to add another border. Add. So I've got two borders now. So now I can select that and drag it up and change the size of that border. I might go with something like that. Oh, maybe a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay. And you can see also you've got a drop down here. Select border style. At the moment it's long horizontal. But you can select that and choose something else. Say corner blocks space squares and so on. The same options are showing up here. You can see space squares is selected there as well. So depending what you want, corner blocks, long vertical, so you can change them up from there. I'll stick back with long horizontal. Now we go on to the design tab. Let's have a look at that. Because what we want to do now is add our, our blocks in here. So when you get to this option, you can see block tools is, is selected here under this design tab. So what you're seeing are the default blocks that are pre-installed with the system here. But you can create your own blocks, which I'm going to show you how to do in a minute, and you can they will be added here. Okay, But at the moment I'm just going to go with the default ones that are here. So I might just click on this one here, this block, and click there. And just click and add. Now what you can do to make this faster if you wanted, you could go Command and click and you see how it, it's added it everywhere. But I want to alternate these blocks, so I'm just going to do that. And then I might select this one here and do it again, and select all of those. Now you can change the colors of these blocks at any time you want. So we could do that, but I'm just going to keep them at this color. Now I want to fill in the borders and the sashing here. So in order to do that, I come over to Fabric Tools. We're still under that main tab. But I select fabric tools now and now I can choose from fabrics or colors but I really want the colors that are in this. You see if I select colors you can click there and just click on a color 
Okay, but that's really not matching my quilt at the moment. So what I want to do is match the colors that are here. So I can use eyedropper and select a color. So I might select, say, I don't know, maybe this color in here. And I'll use that to fill my border here. And I can click like that to fill. Or again, I can click on the command button if I want to do the sashing. So if I click command and click on this sashing, you can see it's added the sashing to all those long lines. And then I'll click command again and click and it's added it to the horizontal ones now. So now I'll do the same. I'll grab the color again, selecting eyedropper, select there, press the command key and click. That's added it there. And I might do to these little sashing blocks in the middle here. Command click and it's added the color there. At the moment my, my quilt is done. So I want to go and print out all of these. I want to print out all the patterns and all the, the, the yardage and all that sort of thing. So let's come over to print and export. And on this screen you get all these different options here. The first one is just a quilt. quilt. It, it, basically what you do when you click on that is it's going to print an image of this quilt here. The yardage, we'll take a look mm -hmm. at that one. I click on that and we go to preview. You can see you can change different width options and different things here. But I'm going to go preview. And this is what it gives us here. So you can see on here it's got the different colors of the fabric. It tells you the number of patches that are going to need to be cut. And then the, it estimates the yardage. So for instance the white fabric here it says one and three eighths of a yard it will need. So you probably buy one and a half yards basically but it gives you the basic yardage options. The blue one here it says it's going to need about two yards of fabric. So that's great. It tells you exactly how much fabric you're going to need for this quilt. I'll close that and cancel that. Uh, the block one is just going to do a picture of the block. So it'll show you a picture, print out a picture of the block. You've got things like templates and foundation for foundation piecing. So the template one, for instance, you can see here it says, please click directly on a block first. So I'll do that, click on a block. And then if I click on templates and preview, you can see it gives us a picture of the different pieces if you were going to be cutting these using templates. So you can see I can drag them around too to make them fit on the screen better. Okay, I'll go close and close. Foundation, I, I'm not into foundation piecing, but basically you've got options here. I, I'm not sure how this works. I haven't actually used it, but the option is there. Close. And the one I really like is rotary cutting. So if I click on that, and you can see it's basically because I've got that block selected it's going to give me the rotary cutting chart for that block and you can change the sizing here you'd probably want to use the size from the quilt so it's defaulting to that but you can create a custom block size if I go preview you can see there now it's giving me a picture of the block and how it's going to be cut and for each of the patches so for the white patches it's saying I'll need four patches measuring three by five sixteenths and so on. So you've got the different colors, the blue one here, it's going to saying you need four, eight patches that, you know, you'll have to cut triangles, so it's saying to cut those. So it basically gives you the cutting um, diagram for that block. Okay, so that's close. So that's the quilt option there. So you, that's how you design a quilt. So now let's look how you design a block. So at, we've been on the quilt work table here. So now we're going to go over to the block work table. So if I select that and we get this screen. So what you're basically doing here is you're drawing. So I'm going to go into the easy draw option and I'm just going to draw. So you're basically drawing like that, creating your own blocks. You design it however you want. I'll just create something really simple. You've got all sorts of options like snap to grids and all those sort of things that help you with this. And what I'm going to do now, I'm, I've done the draw, so now I'm going to come over to color and put some color in this. And I can choose from the fabrics here all the colors. So I'll just choose, say, this one here and this one here to fill there. So you can see I can just quickly click. And once I'm happy with my finished block, I can save this. So what I do is I come over here and add to project sketchbook and that adds it to the sketchbook. Now it's asking me to create a, a whole, I'd have to create a whole, um, save this to my computer, which I'm not going to do right now. But that's mm -hmm. basically the basics of that. You, you're creating a quilt block that you can use to create a quilt. And you've also got options here like print and export. Same sort of options that we had with the quilt. 
Now the image work table, that's for using when you want to import, just say you've scanned some fabric and you want to import it here, this is where you work with it. Now let's take a look at the libraries. If we come up to libraries, block library, this is where the magic happens. I love coming in here because this is where you can choose a quilt block. So, and there's loads of options. If I just compress that, you can see here, this is the EQ library. You've got 10 different options here, 10 different categories. This one down here is block based. That doesn't come automatically with EQ8. You buy that separately, but that can give you thousands more quilt blocks. Now you can see here when I click on the drop down, you get different options within that category. So if I click on antique mosaics, that's the default we're seeing. Baskets, I mean, you can, there's thousands upon thousands in here. I think there's 6,000, I'm not too certain, but I think there's about 6,000 in here. All different sizes here. Okay, so if we come down to, say, simple blocks, for instance, if I select that one, you'll notice that the, it's not just the ones that are showing on the screen here. You can see this little number here, it's saying that there's 49 of these. So if I move across, you can see, you can see all of the blocks within there. And when you've got a block, block you like, you can click on one and then you can click add to sketchbook. So you can save them all into a sketchbook so they become part of your project. Click on there. You can also double click. So if I double click on this one and see how it opens up here, we're back in that drawing section. So I could essentially make changes to this if I wanted by dragging, just clicking and dragging. I'll undo that though. And then you can come in and color it. So you can see there's colors there, but I could just come in and just, you know, change those colors out if I wanted to. Press the command key and click. It's not going to do it there, but if I click around and then I can change them like that. Okay, so if I come back up to libraries and we go into fabric library and see what's in there. And these are all the different fabric swatches. Again, it comes pre-built with a whole heap, but you can buy more. We purchase more from their website that adds the different fabrics to here. So we've come in, we've got colors. You can see that. You can see down here it tells you who they buy. See we've got different um, creators of the, this is French General and so on. So motor fabrics, my sister designs and so on. So you've got different fabrics and then again you can add them to your sketchbook and you can add more than one. You press the shift key, you can highlight and grab more and then click add to sketchbook so they can get added to your sketchbook as well. Okay, click close there. All right, now we've got uh, the layout library and this one gives you pre-done layouts. So you don't have to go and design a quilt if you don't want. You can use these ones that are in here. And again, you can you can see it's layouts by size and layouts by, by style. So by size, and you've even got things like placemats, table runners, lap quilts. So if I like, say, this particular lap quilt here, I can double, I can add it to my sketchbook or I can double click on it. And again, it comes into here and I can start colouring it up if I want. Okay, if we come back to library. Now, these last three, I must admit I haven't even looked at them, so I'm not sure exactly how they work. But you've got the embroidery library, which has all these embroidery files. Now, they're actually not embroidery files, they're embroidery images. So I think basically what you're doing there is you, you, you're putting them onto your quilt to see what they'll look like if you were to do that yourself. So there's loads in here and they tell you the, where they're from. So you could potentially go and buy them, I guess, if you wanted to by, by just searching for the name in Google. But it just gives you an idea of what you can do with embroidery files. Close that. You've got a photo library. And again, I haven't really used this, so I'm not sure what you're doing with this, to be quite honest. What I'll do is, um, if you click the link in the description below, I'll look this up in a little bit more detail to see what you actually do with photos, but the options are there. Okay, we've got a thread library as well. And again, I haven't really used this too much, but it's got all the different thread types in here, and I think you can use them to see what the, the thread color would look like on your, on your quilt. There's so much more it can do than what I've gone through. It is really quite in depth and you'll have a ton of fun using this. It's really great to, to be designing your own quilts. So if you're into that, I highly recommend this. It's well worth it. So if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. It really helps our channel and thank you for watching.